California's ecosystem exists in a delicate equilibrium. It's crucial to understand how each species participates in our local circle of life. As a top predator, mountain lions play a huge role, so it's critical to collect as much data as we can to ensure their survival for future generations. So much of science kind of de-individualizes whatever it is we're studying. And one thing I love about studying lions is that we get to know them as individuals and we get to know them as a population. So how do we get to know them as individuals? Well, one is that we actually capture them and put these collars on that allow us to track them and see where they're going. There is a careful process to capturing wild lions. The first step is locating them. Scientists will go into an area to look for tracks and set up trail cameras. These cameras help determine how frequently the lions are present. Once their presence is confirmed, a trap is prepared which can be walk through cages, the use of hounds, or bait. So we use roadkill deer that uh, we are able to get from, from the state and have permission to be able to use those. And we'll go into that area where we found the tracks and wire that deer to a tree. And then we put a, a camera on it, a trail camera, so we can get some indication of what lion it is that comes in. And we also attach a transmitter to it. And, and so that way when the lion comes in and starts tugging away on that deer to try to, to eat it, he's moving it around, he pulls a little uh, trip on the transmitter and we get a signal knowing that we have a lion there. We go back in with a big cage trap. They're about five feet long and about two or three feet wide and high. And we put the cage trap right where we had the carcass that it was feeding on. And then we take that deer carcass that it's already been eating, we dice it up into sections and wire that to the back of the trap. When the trap door closes, an alert notifies the scientists that a lion has been caught. This usually happens at night, when the lion is most active and searching for food. The scientists then begin a workup, which is similar to a procedure at the hospital. However, dealing with these patients is not as simple. Well, the first thing we have to do, of course, is the mountain lion is not going to be real happy with us just uh, fiddling with it, so we have to anesthetize it first. The sedated lion is then carried to the predetermined workup area, and special care is taken to ensure the lion's safety. We have a patient monitor, so we can hook it up the same as you would have an animal in a, in a hospital or a human in a hospital. It is during the workup that scientists are able to gather important data about the lion's health. Body measurements are taken to determine the lion's age. A good estimate comes from measuring the wear and tear on its teeth. We have an ear tag in them and a tattoo of their ear, and that way, you know, when their collar drops off, either because we command it to fall off or it's reached its, at the end of its life, then if that animal is ever caught in the future, we can either see the tattoo in its ear or the ear tag and know who it is. By collecting data on things like the blood that gives us the genetics, we can look at how the mountain lion populations are interacting. The health information will let us know what diseases are these animals exposed to, and in some cases, if they don't show any exposure to certain diseases, that's actually more of a risk, because if that disease comes in there, they have no, no antibodies to be able to fight it off. So we genotype these lions and we know every individual by its DNA. And then by studying their DNA, we understand how this lion is related to this lion. And we've been doing this work long enough now that we know four generations of lions. These lions all have told me stories as they've gone through their life and I've followed their movements, maybe remotely through a computer, maybe in the field but also through molecular biology, and we can see who was successful 
Who did you mate with? Oh, so that time those two dots came close together on a map, this male and this female, this youngster was a result. DNA has given us the ability to understand families. Prior to starting to study mountain lions, I had seen three in my entire life, and it was always a glimpse as they moved across a road at dusk or at night in some backcountry area. So if that's your only view of lions, what, what can you say from that? Well, there, a lion was here, and it was going that way, or it was going this way. But what we really need to know is how many lions are there? Are they established here as residents? Or are they passing through? Scientists are unsure of the exact number of lions in California. However, in certain areas, studies have shown that their populations are at risk. Everybody has to have the same information. So to me, that, that's my role. That's our role with this project, is to provide information and make it available to everyone. It's the common currency that allows you to then make decisions based on your own values or your own perspective. Only with access to accurate information can we ensure that mountain lions continue to live and thrive as California's feline royalty.